So we lost the original recording. This is this is the second take. Um, if I'm honest, it's it's like it really hurts, right? When you have to retake, man, it hurts. All right, let's get into it. <clears throat> Give me a sec. Ah, hope you guys are doing good, right? Here we go. Here we go. Let's get it. Let's get it. Energy. One, two, three, and let's go. Dear Traveller, and welcome. Today we're talking about the Pentax 17. Yep, you've seen it all over the internet. All the major YouTubers are talking about it. This is the biggest thing to hit the film market in, in, in quite a little time. Who else is making film cameras besides Leica, which is way too expensive? But hey, can I just say congratulations, Pentax. Good on you for releasing something. I'm really happy. What was that? Oh boy. Oh boy. Technical technical issues. Good on you, Pentax, for releasing something. I really, I really appreciate it. Like, big time. I really, really, really think it's amazing. And I'd love to support you on this one. However, I have some, I have some issues. If I'm going to be honest. And I feel like so many YouTubers are just, um not really hitting the mark like they're talking about the specifications and they're talking about um the build quality and like none of that crap matters none of that stuff really matters there's some really hard questions that no one's talking about but of course you come to shutter slaps you, you come to the slaps to get that dose of realism that dose of actual reality so let's get the heck into it because we ain't got time to waste and we got a lot to talk about so let's get into it pentax released a half frame camera that looks kind of like the old pentax mx1 digital camera beautiful camera by the way and also it kind of looks a bit like a voigtlander the voigtlander rangefinder cameras um the rd1 it has that kind of look to it gorgeous 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 i don't mind the look of this camera can i be honest I think it's pretty cool to have a full, you know, it's got a bit of manual capabilities. It's a film camera. They put on a grip because, let's be honest, everyone's going to put a grip on it anyway. So they said, stuff it. Let's just put it in there. So they put a grip on it. We got, um, you know, film camera. It's got light meters, automatic shutter speeds. Boom. They really, can I say this? I really feel like Pentax tried. They really put their heart and soul into this. My big question that not many people are talking about, my big question is this, who's the camera marketed for? Who, who's buying this camera? Who, who's it marketed for? Because let's be honest, if, if there was a, prof, a professional photographer, no way, no way. He's, he's not buying this camera, right? What, what if you're a professional sort of slash enthusiast? What if you're someone who can take some really good photos, you know how to use a camera, right? And you've already got a big kit of all kinds of, you know, crazy digital and film cameras. Are you buying this camera? Nope, you're not. No, you're not. You're not. Let's be honest. You're not, mate. Um, okay, so you're not buying it. So, so what, well, let's say you're an amateur. You're a straight out amateur. Right, you've never touched a, a film camera in your life, and this pops up on the market, and you're thinking, oh, woo, oh, woo, should I buy myself this camera? Do you think, do you think you're going to buy, no, you're not going to, well, you're not going to buy this camera, why? Because, mate, elephant in the room, zone focus. Now, I don't give a crap about half frame. Half frame means nothing. That's not the elephant in the room. No one cares about half frame. If, if you know anything about photography, well, if you know anything about photography, you're not buying this camera, okay? So let's just let's just put that to bed. Now, if you're if you're a newbie to photography and newbie to film photography, you're not going to really care about half frame, full frame. You're not really going to know the difference, right? Um, the biggest thing is manual zone focusing. Now, please understand, please, please. If nothing else, please understand that I love zone focusing. It's actually one of my favorite uh, ways to focus is zone focusing. And you know what camera I like to use? I like to use the Nikonos 2. The Nikonos 2 with a 35mm zone focus lens. It's an absolute stonker. This this thing is an it's just mm, this thing is mm. and you know what? If, if you're new to this channel and you haven't heard about this before, 
because I go on about these cameras a bit. But if you haven't heard about the Nikonos and you're like, oh, what, what's he talking about? It's Nikonos, why? Oh, what's that? Bro, bro. As far as zone focusing goes, imagine if you had a lens that was like good enough to be in a rangefinder of the old um, Nikkor W quality, and you put it into this like camera that's like fully weather sealed, um, waterproof. You can basically take it underwater. Um, it's zone focused. It's super cheap. It costs pretty much a full tank of fuel. That's what this camera costs. Oh, and it's made out of cast steel. It's like, it's like tough as freaking. Uh, tough as tough as crap right this thing is tough as absolute all hell and um it's a beast it's a total beast imagine all that and it's cheap it's freaking cheap don't tell anyone no one's gonna buy it hey, honestly tell them because no one's gonna buy it why is no one gonna buy it because it's zone because <laughs> it's zone focus nobody buys zone focus cameras What's the most popular zone focus camera you can think of? Think about it. Think about it. What's the... I'll tell you. It's the Holger. It's, <laughs> it's the Holger 120N. That's the most absolute... You know what I mean? It's the Holger 120N, right? 120 film and it's zone focus and you got the little one person, two person, three person and then mountains, right? That's that is the the, the ep, like the, the the origin. It is the the omega of, of of zone focusing, right? But here's the weird thing: is that those cameras cost nothing. They cost nothing. They're cheap, and they're shooting 120 film, bro. And it, 120 film now is probably the cheapest film stock, which is um, Kodak Gold 120. Boy, boom. So why who? Who is the Pentax 17 for? To me personally, when I think of the Pentax 17, I think the only people that are buying it are Pentax collectors. The kind of people that own the MX-1, they own the um, Pentax Q, they own the Pentax 110, they own the Pentax uh, K1000. You know, they're, they're just big Pentax lovers. And can I be honest, Pentax is awesome. Like, don't get me wrong, they're... they're if I was going to say what kind of car, what kind of car would Pentax be? Pentax would be Volvo. Pentax is the Volvo of the uh, photography world, right? And that's, I mean that with all due respect, right? Because Volvos are great. Remember the old school Volvos, the old 70s, 80s, 90s Volvos? Fantastic. They're a bit offbeat. They're a bit strange, a bit weird, but they're actually really, 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 really good, right? So, collectors are the only people I can possibly think of that would be buying this camera. Who who would spend that kind of money? Now, I believe it comes in at around 500 US. What does that work out in Australian? What, 800? 7, 8, 900? Almost a grand? Bro, if I said to you, you got got $1,000 to spend on a film camera, what are you going to buy? I guarantee it's not going to be this. It's not. If, if you gave me a thousand dollars to buy a camera and you said, hey, I want it to be reliable, I want it to be, you know, friggin the best of the best, what, what am I going to get? Now, please understand, I'm using this purely as reference. Mate, I'd go, I'd go with Nikon F3. Why, why wouldn't you? Mate, thousand bucks. You could almost get the titanium version, right? Full manual, don't need a battery. Nikon F3, no. It, look. It doesn't, it doesn't use a battery, but you can use it without a battery, is what I'm trying to say. And Nikon F3, and wait a second, I'm just going to pause this. Oh, I'm going to keep recording. Okay, Nikon F3, it's a total, total beast. Um, just, just so we're all on the same page, Nikon F3 went to Vietnam. Uh, it was part of the Vietnam War. Um, this thing is like tough as freaking nails. And okay, so here we go, <clears throat> rent 1.0.1. I believe Pentax built this camera in the feeling of like, hey, film cameras are going to die eventually. We need to start building film cameras so that film can keep can keep living, can keep living, and, and keep keep going because all these old cameras are going to die. We need to bring our new camera. And can I just say, 
can I just say I appreciate Pentax for thinking that way. I really believe they put their heart and soul into this camera. I really believe they're trying to help Pentax slash Rico. I really believe they're trying to do their best that they possibly can. I believe that and I I commend them for it and I really wish um <sighs> I really wish they get what they're, they're looking for, but I just can't see a market for this camera. I cannot see a possible market of who is buying this camera. Because if you gave me $1,000, I sure as hell wouldn't buy this camera. Well, what other half-frame cameras would you buy? Well, mate, the freaking Pentax, I'm sorry, not Pentax, Olympus Pen FT. The Olympics, the Olympus Pen FT, mate. That thing's got a stonking good lens. It's gorgeous. Oh, wait a second. It's an SLR. See, this is the issue that I have. The whole time that Pentax released this camera, I felt sorry for them. I felt pity. I felt like, hey, guys, we can't expect too much. They're trying their best. You know, it's kind of like Polaroid now, how they're trying to recreate the Polaroid film, and you got to kind of go easy on them, mate. They're trying their best, mate. Just go easy on them. They're trying their best. I'm sick of that. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, but I'm over that. I'm finished. I'm done with that because this is the thing. Pentax slash Rico. Let's go back to the nineties. Let's let's go let's go for a little journey, a journey, a, a sojourn back to the nineties. Um, what was happening in the nineties with Pentax slash uh, Rico? Well, Rico came out with the um, what was it? The uh, R one, the Penta. The, the sorry, I'm getting confused now. The Rico was the R one, R one S, R ten, all those kind of cameras. Right, they're freaking autofocus. They've got rewinding. They've got metering. They've got different modes. They've got freaking like there's so much that gets packed into a camera back in the '90s. Like literally, they were giving the best of the best value, insane amounts of technology, insane amounts of image quality, fantastic cameras, pocketable for next like. Uh, look, I have to, I have to honestly, I have to do the conversions, figure out what it will cost now in today's money. But do you get what I'm saying? Like these '90s cameras were freaking awesome. You want to talk about Pec Pentax? What about the Pentax, um, um, Pentax Optio film cameras? Fantastic, awesome lenses, autofocus. Like, surely they still have the design for these cameras, don't they? Surely they still have the 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 freaking tooling that, that required to build them why are we releasing a camera that is like this half ass just like i can feel the love that's gone into it but come on man we're getting very very little for our money whereas back in the 90s you got like a lot for your money you got autofocus like no one would buy a camera that didn't have autofocus you would, honestly, in the 90s, why would you buy a camera that didn't have autofocus? Unless you're a professional. And this is the thing. No one's buying this camera if they're a professional. Nobody is buying this camera if they're a professional. Do you see the problem I've got? Do you see the problem I have? So how come they couldn't put an autofocus in this? Why? Oh, it's too expensive. It's too expensive. You know what they should have done? You know what they should have done? They should have gone, like... Spend 10 seconds and go on, hey, this, this camera is going to be for casual shooters. This camera is going to be for casual shooters who love, who just have this real inspiration, this real love for photography, right? What kind of cameras are those people shooting on? Oh, Fuji. Blah, blah, blah. I love my Fuji. My Fuji X100. My Fuji X-Pro. My Fuji X, X-T1, right? Right, these these people who love film but want to shoot digital, what do they shoot on? Fuji's, Fuji's, Fuji is like a poor man's Leica, right? You want a Fuji X100, 35 millimeter equivalent, um, film simulations uh, has has a bit of a kind of like a fake little uh, a rangefinder system. It's a poor man's Leica, right? Poor man's Leica. Why doesn't Pentax come out with a camera that's like, hey, we're gonna make. Uh, um, a camera that's kind of based off a of Fuji X100. It's 35 millimeter equivalent. It shoots film, so you don't have to bake in this fake um, digital film look. Why not use the real film? You know, why shoot digital when you can shoot film, right? Play on that whole angle. Put a beautiful 35 millimeter lens on it, 
and go to town and try and try and compete with with Fuji because they've already got a big freaking corner of the market. No one can get a Fuji camera for the life of you because the things are so damn expensive. So why not corner? No, 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 no. What about make it interchangeable? What about similar to the Pentax Q, similar to um, similar to the Pentax um, One Ten, make it interchangeable. Those cameras were both interchangeable. Pentax have done it before. No, 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 no. So it's not interchangeable. This is basically one of those Kodak half-frame cameras with a, with a half-decent lens. That's all this is. And it's got a, a light meter and a flash. That's it. And this is where it gets to the sad part. But I won't, I won't get in there just yet. I'll be there soon, but I won't be there just yet. It, but it is sad. It is sad. You know, this is what this is what we're we're looking at as a modern camera. You know, and for the price, for the price, I just can't, I can't fathom it because I can buy. Look, let's be honest. If you're going to talk half frame cameras, mate, I'm going to pick the Konica recorder every time. Here it is. Here it is. I got it right here in my hands. See that? I've got it. Got it right here in my hands. Now, now, why is the Konica recorder so so amazing? How does the Konica recorder compare to the Pentax 17? Okay, well, it's clamshell design, right? So the lens is protected. Now, I will admit the lens on the Pentax can have a filter on it, so that's really cool, right? Right? This doesn't have that. Okay, but I, I guarantee you, most people shooting the Pentax 17, they're not going to be putting filters. Like most people. Not gonna give a crap about that, but anyway. Um, oh, Konica recorder, right? Um, pocketable. Pentax. Don't give me, don't give me this. Pentax is not pocketable. It's not pocketable, right? Konica recorder, hundred percent pocketable. Oh, roughly a thirty-five millimeter equivalent, right? On the old Pentax. Um, Sorry, on the old Konica recorder, right? 35mm equivalent on the Konica recorder. Uh, light meter built in. But check this out. Autofocus. Freaking autofocus. Bang! Right? Autofocus. Also, um, you've got um, film adjustment, ISO to 100, 200, and 400. That's the one limiting factor of the old Konica recorder. It doesn't have an 800 speed or a 1000 speed. That is probably the biggest limiting factor of this camera. But hey, you know what? If, you, if you're shooting the old Porty 800, mate, shooting at 400, it's still going to work, right? Right, 800T, it's still going to work at 400 speed. So, so don't sweaty spaghetti, right? Konica recorder, automatic, right? Auto rewinding takes double A batteries. Why on earth would they bring out the Pentax with like a CR blah 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 battery? Why? Why would you do that, mate? Why not bring it out with double A's, mate? I was in the city a couple of days ago. I had my Konica recorder with me, and oh no, this this bad boy, he's out of battery. Oh no, I need to buy the battery. I go into a Seven Eleven. I get myself some double A batteries. I'm back on the street, mate. I'm back shooting photos. You know, don't give me this, mate. CR freaking battery. You're never gonna get that from it from your corner store, mate. You need to go and buy it. Give me strength. So this is what I'm saying. Who is this camera for? This this like the Konica recorder absolutely destroys it. And it's like a, what, a 90s camera? So, so how have we gone backwards? That's the bit that kills me, is we've gone backwards in society. We've gone backwards in production that we're coming out with this camera now and being like, oh, wow, it's, it's amazing. Bro, you've got autofocus in tiny cameras. You've got crappy little Pentax cameras that have autofocus, right? I own crappy digicam pentax cameras that have autofocus why does this camera not have autofocus and oh don't give me this crap about the price okay because i can buy a pentax camera with autofocus for under 500 australian easy peasy japanesey how is this not how is this not autofocus okay so who is buying 
this camera. Unfortunately, I really feel that there's no market for it. Um, if I was going to buy a half frame camera, Konica Recorder, straight off the bat, autofocus, auto everything, why wouldn't you? It's a brick and brain dead decision, plus Konica Hexanon lens, why wouldn't you? All right. Second, second thing is um, uh, uh, Olympus Pen FT, amazing glass, beautiful mechanical lens. Oh, and wait a second, it's an SLR. <laughs> Oh, isn't that amazing? And then if you really wanted to stress it, bro, why not go the old Holger 135 Tim? Lens, easy camera to use. Why wouldn't you be doing that? That's that's the issue you have. All right, let's launch into it. Now we're going to get into the sad part. We're going to get... Sorry, guys. Bring the lights down. This is the bit where it's sad. It's the bit where it's a bit sad. I have to say it. I have to say it. <sighs> The issue I have, and the bit that I want to talk about, guys, is where the hell has society gotten to? What, what are we doing? Where is society? Because this is my issue. This is my issue. Pentax went out of their way to create a film camera. And I have to admit, I'm pretty impressed, and I have to thank them for the hard work and dedication and love that they Awesome, it's absolutely phenomenally awesome. However, this is the issue we're going to have. These new cameras that they release, how do they compare to the second hand market? How does it compare to the second hand market? Now, for this price frame, 600, 700, 800 Australian, apparently it's like 450, 400, 500 American, right? What can you buy for that? What can you? What kind of cameras can you buy for that kind of money? Well, I tell you what, you could get a Pentax Spotmatic for for next to nothing, hundred dollars, one hundred. You can get a nice Pentax Spotmatic, and not only can you get a nice Spotmatic, but it's got a Takuma lens, one of the greatest fifty mil one point eight lenses you could possibly believe, and it's full frame. Beautiful camera shoots at 1,000 speed. How the hell is the Pentax 17 going to compete with that? It can't, right? And that's just the Pentax. So if you had, you know, that kind of um, budget to spend a 500 US, you could buy a Pentax Spotmatic for next to nothing, and then you could spend the rest on film and development. You're way ahead of the game. Plus, you're shooting full frame. Plus, it has a better lens. Like. You know, the only thing you're missing is it doesn't have a light meter. But who gives a crap because you can get a light meter on your phone, bro. Like, this is the bit that, that I really don't understand how the film... That's the difference. That That's the old world. That's the old world. And go back even further, right? My grandfather, he bought one of those, like, stereograms. Those, like... Do you know what I mean? Stereogram? And it's got like the record player, the radio, and it's built into this beautiful like mahogany stained lacquered cabinet. You know, it's gorgeous. It's gorgeous. Um, you, you know, and I'm sure it was expensive. I'm sure it wasn't cheap. But you know what? He probably bought that in his 40s or 50s. But it's still going. It still went into his 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, mate. The thing was still going, and when he passed away, it was something for his 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 kids or grandkids to inherit, you know? Now, would you ever believe that the Pentax 17 would be something that you could hand down to the younger... No, I can't give me that crap. No way, mate. No freaking way. No way. Mate, Nikon F3 with, with a Nikkor lens? Yeah, maybe. Canon A1? Yeah, maybe. Or a Canon uh, uh, P, Canon P with a, a gorgeous um, rangefinder lens. Yeah, maybe, maybe. What have we lost that in this? It's such a throwaway world. And don't get me wrong, I'm not saying Pentax is um, taking advantage of us and making us, you know, ripping us off. They're doing what they need to survive, and I've got no problems with that. But where we are as society, what the hell is going on, man? Buying these cheap plastic pieces of crap, mate. It, if it lasts a year or two, you're lucky. Ooh. Anything outside of that, the thing's gonna freaking die, and it's gone. Why would you buy it? What is the market for this? It's really sad. It's really sad. 
That's what we're doing. And how is any camera company going to compete with the quality of the lenses back in the 50s, 60s, or 70s? This Pentax 17 actually makes me appreciate Leica. I don't, I'm not a big Leica fan. I don't own Leica cameras. I've never really appreciated them. However, I appreciate the fact that Leica cameras are built to a very high quality to this very day, right? How are any of these modern cameras built to half of the half of the quality that the old cameras were built from? It's just it's laughable. I just don't get it. Oh my goodness! Do you understand what I'm saying, guys? Like, do you get it? Do you get what I'm trying to say? All these new cameras are just plastic, fantastic, cheap junk that you keep for what three, four, maybe five years, and it's going to be gone. Whereas the older stuff, it was quality, it was it was machined, it was like there was heart and soul and work put into it. I don't know, man. I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm crazy, but it's a tough one. I love Pentax. Fantastic that Pentax brought out a new camera. Congratulations. I'm happy for you. I really hope that it does well in the current market. I don't see who would be buying this camera. But whoever, if there's someone watching this video and they're like, mate, I'd love this camera, please comment in them. Get in the comments and destroy me. Please get in those comments. Let me know what you think. Um, because from, from my point of view, I'm thinking, mate, why not buy a Holger 135 Tim? Why not buy a Ricoh uh, or Rick, Rico, um, recorder? Why not buy an Olympus Pen FT? Why on earth would you buy the Pentax? Please, please hit me up. Let me know what you're thinking. As always, guys, I love you guys. I'm telling you this because I'm passionate. I, I'm not trying to have a go at film photography. I freaking love film photography. I love digital photography. I love all kinds of photography. The fact that Pentax went out of their way to build this camera, it's amazing. And I'm kind of half tempted to buy this camera. But I just can't understand it. And I can't understand where we are in the stream of time that we're building these cameras. And the, expect the expectation is so low. It's so low. And, you know, there's all these excuses. Oh, material's expensive. And, you know, there's no market for it. It's like, well, mate, how come years ago we could build, like, the most ridiculous cameras? If you could bring out a, an op a Pentax Optio film camera and rebuild it to those exact specifications that you built 20, 30 years ago, people would be snapping it up. They'd be snapping those things up. So why aren't we doing it? Mate, we already saw the Contax T2 go through the roof, right? T2, T3. Mate, there's a market for it. Why aren't we doing that? Anyway, guys, I love yous. Talk to me. Tell me what you think. Am I crazy? Help me out. And as always, I'll be catching you on that next one.